should be dead too. Okay, it says, begin with a quick synopsis of the case. Seven months after the Columbia accident, the Columbia Accident Investigation Board presented the report on the causes of the accident. The board pinpointed the technical cause of the accident. It also identified organizational issues within NASA dating back decades. The guy also reported how manager might have behaved differently during the mission and stressed the organizational shortcoming at NASA that contributed the catastrophe. Um, okay, so what what do you think were the the issues of the case study? Um, Tyler. Uh, issues were dealing with the, I guess you would say protocol in when a mission should be unsafe to fly and the, the steps that should be taken in order to ensure that everything is covered before the launch of one of the spacecrafts, space shuttles. Mm -hmm. What else, guys? And Tyler nailed it right on the head with, you know, um, once it started compromising. Sorry? No, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just saying that, that once it started compromising with, you know, the safety and like the old rings, for example, you know, even though there was an expert from the manufacturer saying, hey, you should probably postpone, they're like, eh. <laughs> and then obviously that didn't result in something good. Uh, and then, yeah, like the protocols of just communicating, uh, like when the, I can't remember his last name, um, asked if, if the astronauts could check the damage while they were out in, in space, the guy never even got back to him. Like they didn't even respond, never responded to him saying, hey, we could look into it. And that could have made a difference too, right? To really see the damage that was done or even the pictures when they requested the pictures. You know, it, it was just a mess. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, just to go alongside with that, I just feel like there, there's way too many branches and each branch could decide when they cut off the communication of something that's wrong or because they would deem it unfit to pass it on to superiors. And I think that this caused way too many issues. And I, I believe that um, it was already talked about. Yeah. I also think that, or are you still talking, Michael? Sorry, what? Oh, sorry. I thought you were, you were uh, still talking. Yeah. No, yeah, my microphone is not doing well, so I, I have to keep muting it so it doesn't make noise for you guys. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so um, something that I also found like very like important, as Mao was saying, or all of you, is that there was actually a problem, right? But like everyone were like, oh, forget it. Like, don't, don't worry about that. And also I read about um, that the, they, aren't, they were the managers, they didn't like wanted to accept or tell things that things were wrong because they were, they could get a, a punishment or something like that I read. But well, like, uh -huh. I was going to say, yeah, they were some of the upper managers, like there's the one lady that didn't want to press like the problem further because it would delay a already a future scheduled launch that she was going to be in charge of. So she didn't want to make a big deal about the issue because her her time in the, in the spotlight was coming up with the next launch. And if that didn't happen, it would push back her her success. Mm hmm. And I don't remember what her name is, but yeah, yeah. So basically, and and yeah, there were, I think there were many problems about organization, about hierarchy, like bad hierarchy. Like um, I also think that um, 
yeah, like engineers were right, and but but the manager just dim, diminished. Is that the word? It diminished the like their comments or their researching or like, yeah. Why do you think it's important to um like to solve those those problems? Uh, Last thing we're talking about people's lives here. Any slight mistake could be a catastrophe, and it just shocked me that it wasn't taken seriously. Yeah, because they talked about there's this portion where they talked about like the purpose of the shuttle of like the space program was for like exploration, science, and whatnot. And in my case study paper, I said that that kind of needs to change where like the number one priority of NASA needs to be the safety of the astronauts and then space exploration and, and scientific experiments and whatnot. But they, they put, they put the, they put the shuttles and the, the schedules that they had was more of a priority than their lives. Cause that one guy even like had that heated argument in with somebody that didn't push something along and the guy ended up saying like, well, if it's really that bad, there's nothing we can do about it anyway. Basically saying like not really giving much thought to the astronauts lives and just kind of saying, oh, well. Yeah. And, and I agree with that, that it, they didn't have the right priority. Um, like you said, like they, they were more concerned about cutting costs because budget was already, you know, pretty, pretty tight. And then, making sure they made the deadlines. Uh, I was actually reading the, the mission statement for, for NASA. If you go to their website, it says that their vision to discover and expand knowledge for the benefit of humanity. And I'm like, it, it's funny that, you know, those things didn't show that they, that it was a benefit for humanity. For humanity. They basically, you know, jeopardize the lives of those astronauts. Right. So to me, it was like, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for a, for an organization that, has that vision to jeopardize the lives of those who are carrying out that vision. You know, that they should make that a priority to safety first and, and ensuring that their astronauts can go and come back so that they can further and, and bring knowledge and benefit humanity. Yeah, I think there was a lack of uh, integrity and honesty. And, uh, and yeah, as you said, like, it's very a, a human being or a, just a human it's very important like and they like it's funny how they just like oh an accident happened people died never mind let's keep going with the next flight you know it's like really and uh and i was thinking about if they if they if they could like just wait a little bit more save that money of that next like that that it was going to be a catastrophe and a lot of uh, loss like talking about pieces in the in the in the flight or I don't know like you know like material stuff that costs money they should wait like just a little bit more and invest that that cost of that next flight on like uh, checking all that stuff that they needed and and even if they if they lost uh, one, one flight or yeah, they could invest that money to check the, or to solve the problem for the next, next flight, you know, like for, I don't know if it makes sense for you, but um, so I think that's better. And, uh, and of course, uh, that, that could help them to know how catastrophes like losing astronauts or losing people, which, which I think it's like, super bad and more now that you said the vision that the nasa has so yeah i, I think what you said makes sense when i said and, and yeah it probably would have cost less waiting a little bit more and investing in that than losing everything that they lost yeah anything else okay i will i will read this because um well, it says- uh, There's a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So it's said at the beginning to focus on what we would like to, mm-hmm. yeah. to focus on, like. Yes. It says, what is human cognitive, I don't know how to pronounce it, biases, biases, and how does it apply in this case? It says cognitive biases or whatever. Biases. Like you're being biased to something? Biases, like that? Yeah. Okay. It says systematic errors in judgment, confirmation bias, our tendency to look for information that confirms our existing views, some coast uh, bias, our tendency to escalate commitment to a curse of action into which we have already invested time, money, or other resources. Can you see my screen? Yes, right? Mm-hmm. So, well, these are the types of, of biases. And it says, how does it apply these types in this case? I'm choosing to go to this question because other questions are based in this one. So that's why. Oh, so we're to this where the the lack of communication and the lack of focus of focusing on the lives of the astronauts, whereas to not repair the shuttle as it should have been repaired, they just deemed it as a as a risk that wouldn't be a problem of safety of flight. Yeah. You know what I was just thinking? The thought that came to my mind when I was reading the sunk cost bias. Um, I feel like they had that mentality. They're like, we've already invested so much in this. We're already behind schedule. You know, let's let's just push for this. And and it reminded me of the story on uh, on the book, Seven Habits, when he's talking about sharpening the saw. Or, or, you know, when the guy's like, you know, why don't you stop cutting that tree and sharpen the saw? Mm-hmm. And the guy's like, well, I'll... I don't have time. Like I, I need to cut this tree, right? And he's already spent so much time and effort in that. So he was so committed to cutting that tree with the crappy saw that you know he could have saved a lot more time and, and effort by sharpening the saw and then cutting it just quicker. So I think they they had that you know sunk cost bias in the sense that they were too far too deep, too far you know deep into it and they just wanted to keep going. Yeah, I like that because because I mean their budget. I think in like the Apollo missions, it said like their budget was like $25 billion. And then with all these new missions and the and the reusable shuttles, it like dropped down to five billion. So there's already that like stress of not a not having the budget that they used to. And like they had set their they had set like a like they said, like in one year they can do fifty. They can do fifty missions, and I think that was a huge problem because yeah, they got stuck on that schedule. And it's like, well, if we if we, if we delay this, I no manches que se fue el internet. Y estoy grabando. Guys, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Sorry, guys, my internet. Sorry. You're good. So I think I think the recording just lost Tyler's uh, comments. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tyler. It's fine. Yeah, do you want to tell us like briefly what you said? Uh, what? 
how much did you all hear? Anything or no? Yeah, just like half of it. So I basically, say, I heard it all, but yeah, but the recording, I think it doesn't got, oh. got everything. Yeah, basically, yeah, them their budget being cut, and then they had promised that they can do fifty missions within a year, and postponing one mission or causing a delay during a mission would then cause future schedule the, the future flights and launches to get pushed back, which would then cause problems because the White House and Congress were expecting results from the money that was invested into NASA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when did you think the problems with Columbia begin? Uh, I mean, the flights beforehand when they knew that the foam was like every mission or every launch there was loss of there was foam damage to the tiles and they just they got to the point where they said where they just said that was just going to be that's just expected and they can't they can't change that so i feel like they lost innovation and in trying to figure out how to fix that problem and just said it, it is what it is and we can't change it yeah i think I think all the companies or uh, yeah, all the companies or businesses, it's okay to have wrong things or that not all things go go right. Um, I think the problem started when they didn't assume that the things were not going well, and they don't like they didn't stop. I think that's, well, for me, I think that's when the problems started. Uh, because, yeah, probably the, the flights and they were not prepared for it, but not admitting that, not admitting that they were uh, not prepared or the, 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 the Colombia was not ready. Um, I think that's where, where they started to have like this problems. I actually want to change my answer because it goes back even further in my opinion like uh because the budget was cut and they were pushed with deadlines like it talked about how they were testing the rockets on ground instead of in flight so right there they are they were already cutting um they're already cutting their expenses and um for testing of like an actual in-flight rocket to save time and money, which I thought was a huge red flag. Yeah, true. Mel or Michael, do you have something to say? I agree with you, Tyler. Um, it's not gonna be the same, you know, flying it and doing it in ground and um, it, it's a totally different experience for sure. I agree that they've been cutting corner, not cor maybe not so much cutting corners, but looking for the quicker way to get things out and, and cost, you know, save costs as much as possible. Yeah. I will definitely agree with all you guys about the topic. That really does come down to the root cause of the experiments that they were and the tests that they did beforehand and not making appropriate adjustments. Michael, are you still talking? No, I'm not. Okay. Sorry. It's just that sometimes like I hear noise. So okay. But were you guys able to hear my answer? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just making sure. Yep. Okay, so how would you characterize the culture at NASA? The strengths and weaknesses. I think I think one of the strengths is that the engineers 
they really care. Like they, they were doing good, or at least the engineer that was trying to figure out what happened and the pictures, you know, he was asking for the picture. And like, that, that is a good strength that they really care. Like they were like the engineer or that engineer. I don't know if all the engineers were like that, but that engineer, he cared, like he really, he really wanted to solve the problem. So that's a very good strength because there in some other places, there are sometimes engineers that, that they say, okay, probably this thing is wrong or, or it's not working, but I won't tell or something, you know, but I think the engineers were uh, honest and the weaknesses, um, I think the culture that they didn't really mind or, or the importance of the, of the astronauts were, was less than, than the schedule, right? I'm sorry, it was less than what? Say, sorry? What was the last thing you said? Was less than something? Oh, I don't remember, but something about, about that. One of their weaknesses is that they, uh, the, the managers, it seems that they didn't care. They didn't get, care that much. Uh, of okay. astronauts than than the schedule or to follow okay. the schedule. I'd like to also add on that one of the weaknesses would be communication, passing along information to higher ups. Like I said at the beginning of the meeting, they would just cut emails or not respond to emails. And then wanted to send it to the general management team to see what issues were at hand. Yeah, I agree definitely. Yeah, I was the, gonna say the, that too, Michael. Yeah, the communication and like the ahead, chain of the chain of command because there were like there was like certain people that were definitely the head of like their groups, but there's but like they would send something to somebody and then it would just get lost in the mix of things and there's never any follow-up. So, but yeah, overall, yeah, just poor communication. And there was too many definitely. like, uh, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, uh, definitely communication was an issue. There was no synergy, like no win-win uh, mentality, right? So like, and their strength was that they had a lot of knowledge. Like yeah. these are smart people. And they have good resources to get information, but because of the lack of information, nothing got really done. And, and that strength pretty much wasn't used as it should have. Yep. Okay. Um, so this, this, two questions is about last um, readings, like not, not exactly this week, but some of the other weeks. And um, it says, what is the concept of team design and the concept of psychologic, psychological safety? So we remembered, right, that um, talking about the case, probably this is these questions are not from the case or for the case. But talking about the case, I think um, somehow, good thing that the engineer, like he was still like asking and asking and sending emails and doing his best. Um, and it's supposed for, a, for a psychological safety, it's supposed that the managers and the rest of the, of the team, like, hear him and answer him and you know like respond him um so so we can be like they can have a better communication and and a better yeah a better culture around or in the environment what do you think about 
team design and psychological safety. Like the psychology, the psychological safety, I think was kind of a problem in the sense that like, uh, I don't feel like anyone had a problem speaking their mind, but there was a problem with being like actually heard with their concerns and like taken, um, taken seriously because people were more concerned with what their upper management at least was more concerned with their position and how it would, ref it would reflect badly on them if they were the ones that, ultimately pulled the trigger to say, hey, there's a, we have a big issue here that needs to get fixed that's going to cause a delay in X, Y, and Z. Okay, thanks. So um, any other comments about this? Okay, so what what principles, if any, form these lessons reading apply to this case? Well, I think Mal already mentioned about like sharpen the, uh, I forgot the other word, but he 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 made a good. Um, oh my English, I'm lost. Like he made he did a good example with that, you know, he made it, and. Um, what what other uh, principles of this lesson, of of this habit seven? Did you like kind? ¿Cómo se dice? Como identificar o juntar o, o identify or it's it's not really. ¿Cuál es la otra palabra? Es relacionar, quiero decir en inglés. Uh, so, what other lessons could relate to the ah, reading? Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Translating. Um, I think that, you know, because step seven is basically doing everything again, right? Like, uh, I think of step seven, like uh, in the gospel, uh, we think of enduring to the end. Uh, and, and I, don't like the word enduring because it's it sounds kind of like a negative <laughs> like endure you're putting up with something but i like to think of it as becoming to the end like becoming more like christ and i think habit seven it's that same concept of becoming more synergetic becoming more uh efficient and with your time so i think that yeah uh, all of these issues that they had could have been solved you know, if they were proactive and if they were more in, in open communication and really seeking to understand what the engineer is trying to say and, and why they're saying that, um, it would have made a world of a difference. Yeah, thanks. Michael, do you have something to say? No, uh, sorry. I I don't know what's been going on here in the Boise area, Idaho. It's just all networks have been so bad as of late. So I apologize that I didn't participate that much this time around. It's fine, Michael. Don't worry, Tyler. Uh, no, I I really like what I said about um with step seven and yeah with with uh becoming and not enduring. So, like that a lot. Thank you. So, well, these are some of the questions that I wanted us to, um, oh, sorry, wanted us to discuss. Uh, something, something that I like about this, this uh, week uh, case study is that this was not like a small business, you know, that just influenced a little like part of the world or like a little market, you know, this, this is the NASA, this is like a big thing, you know, and it's incredible how, um, how 
I just can't can't imagine how they didn't really care about their astronauts or it's it for me it was very amazing. I thought that NASA was like a very uh, good company. Probably now it is, but I mean those times and the values and a lot of stuff that I'm like really you know. So um, I think there's a lot to learn about this and. And also another thing that I want to um, highlight is that the organization in each of the companies, it's very important to have a, a good communication. That's, that's super important. And more if there is a big organization, like, again, I am, I really like the hierarchy that, the, the good hierarchy that we need to have in the companies and more in the big companies if not it will be like this you know something has something and someone has something and no no response nobody responds so i don't know that's something that that i learned that organization is very important for small companies or big companies like nasa and also integrity honesty and well good values in all in all the the, the employees or the workers. Okay, any last comment that you want to add in this meeting? No, all good. Well, thank you to V be for being in this meeting and I will stop recording.